Color space. You know, a lot of questions been asked about this. Color space. Color space. What is color space and how much of color space I should use? Should I adjust it through a calibration? Well, if you're a professional calibrator, if you have the equipment and you have the proper devices to measure that color space, also with the software, then I guess you can do that if you know how to do it. But in general, I will tell you there's two different types of color spaces. You got automatic and then you got native. Uh, color space is the measurement, the ratio measurement, the spectrum level of colors that are being presented on the panel. Some panels have a high ratio uh, of, or if you, for the lack of a better term, a higher spectrum of colors, and some of them, they have lower spectrum of colors. That's really what that is. What the DCIP3 is, is the measurement of color. Uh, they get measured by many different types of methods. You heard the phrase uh, Rec. 709, Rec. 2020. Uh, Rec. 2020 is the full color accuracy, full wide color gamut, meaning that you're getting a full wide color gamut, full spectrum of colors. Now, when you go to your TV settings, currently you're looking at a Jurassic Park 4K UHD Blu-ray movie. And the reason I chose this scene, a lot of people say, well, why did you choose this scene? The reason I chose this scene is because it has a lot of color. It has green, it has red, it has uh, blue, a little bit of yellow, and this will be a great example for me to show you what I mean by using the native color instead of automatic color. Automatic color is going to automatically adjust the enough color that you would need for the movies. But me personally, it's a personal preference. I like to have the full advantage of this TV. The reason I bought this TV is because of the color accuracy. It's because of that color gamut, that 98.7%, nearly 100% DCI-P3 measurement of color. And that's why I got this TV, because I want to take advantage of that HDR, that color gamut, and the quantum dots. So let's go to the settings, and let's go ahead and click on the uh, expert settings. Remember, I always leave it on warm one for the movies i always suggest that you guys use warm one color now let's go to the uh the color space uh what i'm gonna do here i'm gonna go ahead and uh, i'm gonna pause this i'm gonna pause it right here and uh i'll probably have to zoom in maybe not I'll probably have to zoom in a little bit here so you guys can see a little bit better. Uh, I want you guys to pay attention right here where the grass is. So pay attention right here where the grass is. And right now I'm on the native. And you see much better representation of the color. As soon as I go to the automatic, the color becomes a bit bleak. As soon as I go to the native, the color becomes more natural and in much better contrast. Soon as I go to the uh, automatic, the color becomes bleak. I don't want the bleak color. This is just my own personal preference. I want the colors to be more vibrant. And I want to enjoy this movie in a more vibrant colors. This doesn't mean that you're oversaturating. People need to remember, you are not oversaturating colors when you are forcing uh, native uh, rec 2020 uh, color space, meaning full white color gamut. When you're forcing that native color, you're not oversaturating the color. Okay, so people need to remember that. There's no oversaturation here. The only way you can oversaturate the colors is if you move the color slider to, let's say, 70% or something like that. So, this is a personal preference, guys. It's a Personal preference, I just prefer to have my color space at native. It just, to me, looks better. Maybe I can uh, use one example here as well. I want you guys to keep an eye on the Jeep 
and the color of the Jeep. And then look what happens when I move it to automatic. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Like if you pay attention right here where my finger is right over there, you will notice it. And here's another good example right here. Right now we're in a native color. And then when we move to automatic, you will notice a slight decrease of the color. Especially on the Jeep. Pay attention to the Jeep as I'm switching back and forth between native and automatic. Pay attention on the Jeep. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pause right on the Jeep. So you guys can see that color on the Jeep really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. Okay, we see where it says 18 right here. Uh, it has a little bit of reddish orange color right here. It's a native and you're getting that natural representation of the color. When you move it to automatic, you slightly lose a little bit of color here. And when you move it to native, you get more color. So here's the thing. Look, uh, you were watching HDR movie and you're watching such an old movie like this movie. You really want to have a little bit of more of that color. Me personally, guys, in my own personal preference, I'm not saying that you have to use native. You can use automatic. I'm not saying it's some kind of a law or the rule that you got to go with the native. You don't have to. This is my own personal preference. Let me repeat this one more time for the record. This is my own personal preference recipe. You don't like it? Don't use it. But I think you should give it a try. I think you should give this a try. Uh, nothing's being oversaturated here. People who say it's being oversaturated, they have no idea what they're talking about, number one. The only way you're going to oversaturate the color is if you go to the color slider and then move the slider to maximum or 70 or 80%. Now you understand, with this video, hopefully you understand why I choose to go with a native color space. So, there you have it. Just a short little video. I wanted to show you this. Hopefully this helps. And uh, you guys have a good one, though. Take care. I'll see you later.